Um, okay, fast forward a couple of years. There are these wise men. They are magi. They are astrologers, uh, probably Jewish, probably from the diaspora uh, in 70 BC, and um, way far away, way near Babylon. But they knew the scriptures and the star appeared. They knew it would. They had studied and knew that it would, and it did. And it was magnificent, like nothing they had ever seen. And so they get themselves together. We only know three, um, Melchior, Belshazzar, and who's the third one? Malchus. And, um, but there were probably many. And uh, they travel. I mean, we are talking, the scriptures are thousands of miles, thousands. It probably took them two, three years. Can you imagine having that much passion about this that they just had to get there? And they did. And, of course, they knew this was going to be the king. And so they went to the palace in Jerusalem to see Herod, thinking that, of course, it would be his son. But, of course, Herod was not really a Jew. A Jew. He was appointed by Rome. So he didn't know the scriptures. In fact, they were so far from living their faith at this time. And so the wise men went and they said, can you tell us where is this king of the Jews that has been born? And he said, he played along with them. Well, um, I'm not sure, but I will find out. He calls oh, all his men and you know, you, your heads will roll if you don't tell me what's going on here. And they, they quickly go through the scriptures and all the scrolls. And they said, yeah, yeah. There is supposedly right at this time, around this time, a uh, uh, Messiah was prophesied to come. And so he, you know, he was called the fox. He did a lot of good things as far as building. And he rebuilt the temple. It was beautiful. But he was very evil. And I think I told you that he had had three of his sons killed and a wife, uh, just wiped him out. And uh, he was cruel. But he played along and he said, now, you stay the night here. And then in the morning, you go and find the child and then come back, come back through and tell me so that I, I may go and worship this king. And so they said yes. So they went, and they, they went the five miles to Bethlehem, and they found the baby. And they went in, and it didn't, it didn't seem odd to them that these wonderful king, with all their entourage, can you imagine? All their, their tents and their, their wealth, and, but they go in to this very humble place. They prostrate themselves on the ground to worship Jesus, the Messiah. And scripture says their joy knew no bounds. There was no joy like their joy at that time. And they brought gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. The gold, meaning the deity, the frankincense, meaning the worship and the Holy Spirit, and the myrrh, foreshadowing his death on the cross and his burial. Uh, Mary and Joseph would need these things. Well, they worshiped the king. And that night, uh, one of the magi had a dream that they were not to go back and tell Herod, so they went way around Jerusalem, back to their home country. About three years, probably. Two years, three years. That same night, Joseph had the second of his four dreams that he would have. And the angel said, Joseph, the child is in danger. You're in danger. Mary's in danger. Quickly, get up, get them, leave town, go to Egypt where the child will be safe. 
he obeys immediately, like in the middle of the night. He gets them up, they go. Herod finds out he has been duped. He sends out the troops and they kill every baby boy under the age of two within a five mile radius. Now, let's just think about that. You're gonna take my job? Uh-uh, I don't think so. Ripped out of their arms, before their very eyes, beheaded. Unspeakable. I mean, can you think of anything more unspeakable? Fulfilling the prophecy in Jeremiah 31, Rachel weeping, weeping, wailing for her children and cannot be comforted. There is no comfort. Well, Joseph, Mary, and the baby, who is now two, going on three, uh, are in Egypt, and uh, Joseph is a carpenter, and they have had very much use for the gold. It has caused them to get established, and they had thought they would just stay, uh, but Joseph has another dream. And this time, the angel says, it's safe to go back. You can go back to Nazareth because Herod has died. You're safe. Go. And so they go. But on the way, when they're just this side of Jerusalem, Joseph has his fourth and final dream. And the angel says, go way around because Archelaus is on the throne and he is more wicked than his father. And they arrive and... Nazareth, and can you imagine reunion? Can you just imagine the reunion? 